interesting about neutrinos is that unlike all the other standard model particles, the neutrinos are actually not behaving the way that we expect. Once you've seen one departure from prediction, then you have to start asking what else do the neutrinos do? And in particular, one of the questions that we have out there is, is there an extra neutrino? Are there other types of neutrinos? And they might not interact the same way as the neutrinos that we know and love. And if they don't interact, then what we say is that they're sterile. The neutrinos that we know in the standard model can morph into these sterile neutrinos. And it turns out that IceCube is the perfect detector to go out and look for this kind of morphing. IceCube is best known, of course, for detecting cosmic neutrinos. It's amazing that IceCube detects neutrinos all the way from 10 GeV to 10,000 TeV. And somewhere in that energy range, we actually have the opportunity to detect sterile neutrinos. What we can do is measure oscillations of neutrino beams coming through the Earth What's special about the Earth is that the neutrinos interact with matter. And if they spend some of their time as a sterile neutrino, then uh, these oscillations are slightly changed. They are retuned to the fact that at some specific energy, they make a resonance. And this is a dramatic effect in the data, which you either see or you don't see. It's as simple as that. We know we have three active neutrinos because a long time ago we measured very well the number of uh, light neutrinos that interact weakly. Therefore, if there's another neutrino that, uh, that is light, it cannot interact. This is why it's called a sterile neutrino. A sterile neutrino is a hypothetical fourth type of neutrino and it has a few important properties. Among those important properties are that it has mass and that mass is different from the masses of the other known neutrinos. Uh, the other important property is that the sterile neutrino interacts only gravitationally. Because it's so non-interacting, that makes it rather hard to detect. However, we can see the effects of sterile neutrinos in the way they influence the behavior of the other known neutrinos. Neutrinos in the standard model are supposed to be massless particles, and they do not change flavors, they propagate. But in reality, they do. And this implies that neutrinos must have masses. And they not only need to have masses, but they need to have very small masses. The mass of a neutrino is like a million times smaller than the mass of an electron. So we need some new physics mechanisms that both explains why neutrino has mass and why is that mass small. So studying neutrino oscillations is a gateway to this new physics frontier. A sterile neutrino is a very general concept because it can come with many masses, it can come with many mixing angles. The sterile neutrino we are concentrating on has a mass of all on order 1 eV. During the last two decades, uh, neutrino experiments have hinted some evidence for a light sterile neutrino, which will have a very small mixing angle with the active sector. This makes it particularly challenging to find it because of the smallness of the mixing. But what happens in IceCube is very special. These small mixing angles become enhanced by the matter effects, so we are able to see that same neutrino, but now with a very much larger effective mixing angle and that gives lots of power to our analysis. If there is a signal in IceCube, with the model that we have at the moment, we're expecting the signal to be very large. And so IceCube should really see it. But if IceCube doesn't see it, then that's a really interesting result also, because what happens then is that we have to rethink what our model is. We have this amazing beam of neutrinos created in the atmosphere by the cosmic rays, and IceCube sees one of these neutrinos approximately every six minutes. The idea is very simple. IceCube detects atmospheric neutrinos over a wide range of energies with a peak at around 1 TeV all the way up to hundreds of TeV. Um, these are actually an annoying background to the astrophysical searches that IceCube was designed for, but they're also a great tool for studying particle physics. The sterile neutrino changed the amount of mu neutrino via the neutrino oscillation phenomena, and that basically is related with when the neutrinos propagate, they change flavors from one to another. Then adding a new flavor, it may produce the mu neutrino going to this sterile flavor and disappearing. It turns out that it is more likely to morph into a sterile neutrino if it goes through a very dense region of matter. And so the core is ideal for producing much more morphing than you would get if for the neutrinos that do not travel through the core. 
And so what we're looking for is we're looking for neutrinos that are on the trajectory that comes through the core to disappear. One expects a very large depletion effect at around 1 TeV energies, which is an amazing coincidence of the size of the Earth and the energies and this mass of the neutrino. One of our early collaborators on IceCube, solar neutrino pioneer John Bacall, was actually doing this same analysis more than 10 years ago. He realized that uh, IceCube had this capability, and in fact uh, the detector as it was designed to look for cosmic neutrinos was perfectly capable to see this resonance because it's such a dramatic effect. We expect the, this, this disappearance of mere neutrinos around TV energies, and we have tens of thousands of events uh, at these energies in IceCube. No other experiment can measure these uh, neutrinos at these energies. We did not find sterile neutrinos. However, we can't rule them out completely. But what we can say is that if the anomalies 20 or 30 years ago were caused by sterile neutrinos, we would, ex we would have expected to see a signal in our detector, and we did not see one. That's going to put a very large tension in the experiments that claim or have hints of sterile neutrino signatures. And what that's going to mean is that our belief in sterile neutrino decreases, but it also is telling us where sterile neutrino cannot be and where it may still survive. And so our not finding it in IceCube has this huge impact because now what we need to do is we need to start looking beyond the very simplest models that we've put together and ask, you know, what is it that would make sense to add in? In the absence of a discovery, we'll still keep looking. And of course, IceCube is studying neutrinos over a really large dynamic range. And we'll keep studying all these neutrinos at all these energies with the hope that somewhere the standard model gives and we begin to discover new physics. It could be just that nature is much more complicated. You know, people like to say that nature is very simple and very beautiful, but I think nature is very complex and a little bit messy. IceCube is a great tool to measure nature and in that sense about measuring fundamental loss the only limitation is our imagination.